A new toy just arrived on my doorstep. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and we're about to unbox the Sony Xperia Z. So I rushed home to make sure that I got home in time so I could be here for the DHL guy, and I'm glad I did. He came shortly after I got home, and this device arrived just moments ago. The Sony Xperia Z, which was part of a duo that was announced by Sony at CES. The ZL and the Z. This one has waterproofing and dustproofing, which makes it a little more durable than its brother. However, this one does have a glass back and the other one doesn't, so there is that. It's kind of a trade-off. I'd also like to give a shout out to our friends over at clove.co.uk who is providing us with this unit for a review. So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing and see what this device is about. So first you will notice that the box is nothing special. It's just a simple box, no special branding or anything. Nothing particularly awesome about this box. It's just a standard box. Nothing too wowing about it. But who cares about the box? It's nice, but we're all going to just discard that anyway. We're going to toss it aside. And the good thing about it is that it opens very easily. Unlike many boxes nowadays, this one is extremely easy to open. Once you get the top off, the device sits right there at the top, ready to be opened or turned on, whatever. But we're going to wait. That comes later. Inside the box right beneath the device is a pack of screen protectors. You get two of them. Count them. Two a microfiber cloth, and an applicator with that. So that's neat, nice little add-on there, little touch. And this insert comes right out. You also have some, some getting started guides, quick startup guides, important information, and FCC statement and other information about the device. So little reading material if that's your thing. You also have the international, this is an international version of the device. You have the you're, you have a UK plug. This does not work for me. I'm in North Carolina, so I will not be able to use this at all. This is useless to me. Oh well, I've got a million chargers. It's okay. You also get some headphones, which is nice. Not many devices are coming with headphones anymore, so it's nice to see these. They look nice. They uh, probably won't stay in my ears, but they're actually pretty cool looking. So hopefully those are, are decent. No hat. I know many of you will be happy with at least some headphones in the box. It's nice to get a little add-on every now and then. And your standard micro USB cable. That's it. Nothing special fancy here. So that's what you get inside the box. You get some headphones, a UK charger, which is helpful if you're in the UK. I think that's a UK charger. I've never been overseas, so I don't know. <laughs> you get your standard reading material, some screen protectors, and the device. So let's sit this stuff aside for time and take a look at the device itself because that's why we're all here. So once you get the device out of the box, you'll notice it comes in this plastic sleeve. We're gonna discard that. We don't need that. It's not the plastic, so don't get mad at me. The plastic is still on here. So we'll get to that in a minute. But once you get the device out of the box, you will, get, you will see that it has a five inch display on the front. That is a 1080p display, so you can expect a high quality picture. It also has a 2.2 megapixel front facing camera that will record at 1080p. This at the bottom is your microphone and this up at the top is the earpiece speaker. So that's really all for the front. There are no capacitive or physical buttons. The buttons are actually on-screen buttons, so they're software. So the five inch display is actually gonna feel more like 4.8, maybe 4.7, because they, those are gonna take up screen space. So that's, that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at five inch phones. This one's actually gonna probably feel a little bit smaller than five inches after you get the power after you get it powered on because there are no physical or capacitive buttons. On the top edge here is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It is under a cover because this device is waterproof. So it's got gaskets that keep water out when it is covered. That is your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top. On the side here, we have the micro USB port under a cover as well. So that one's covered up. This is your micro SD card slot, also covered up, and you have prongs for apparently what would be a dock for this device. On the bottom, there isn't anything except for this hole for a lanyard, and if you come around to the side, you also have a speaker. A volume rocker on the right side and a power button. And just above the power button is another hole. This is a cover for your SIM card slot. There's a SIM tray right in here. There it is. So you can put your SIM card in there and activate the device. So that's all for the edges. You have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, micro USB, micro SD, speaker, volume, power. So there is that for that. 
And once you get to the back, you have a 13.1 megapixel camera with an LED flash. This is your NFC branding, Xperia branding, and that's about it. It is a glass back, and we'll get to that once we tear the plastic off. But let's start with the front of the device. Let's get this close to the microphone and start peeling that slowly. Oh, there's no sound. Very little sound of that at all. That's disappointing. There's no sound from the plastic. I peeled it slow and there's no sound. Hopefully there is some on the back. Nothing. No sound. No. Michael Fisher will be upset. There's no sound from this plastic. It's more of a flimsy, like, laminate than anything. It's not really plastic plastic. So, no sound. Sorry, Michael. But this is a very, actually, beautiful device. It's very edgy. There's not a lot of rounded corners. It's very squared and it feels like that in the hand. It feels bigger than it actually is. A lot of devices have a tapered back or tapered edge that make it feel small. This does not. It, it feels comfortable. It doesn't feel too big, but it also feels bigger than it actually is. It feels more like holding a note than maybe, say, the DNA because the DNA had a tapered back and it felt smaller. But it was about the same physical size as this one. But on the back here, you have a glass panel, so it is very fragile. I guess that's a, a downside to some people. Um, it is glass. I don't know if this is Gorilla Glass. I'm, actually, it's not Gorilla Glass. It is strengthened glass. It's scratch-resistant and crack-resistant glass. But the branding does not say anything about Gorilla Glass, so I think it's something similar to, but not actually Gorilla Glass. So we'll have to see how it stands the test of time, if it stands, withstands drops or anything. We'll see. I don't know yet, but it is glass on the back and glass on the front. And again, there is that NFC logo if you want to see that a little closer up. I don't know if we can focus on that. We'll try. No focusing. I don't know. I can't get that to happen just yet. Sorry about that. We'll see that. I'll, I'll take a closer look at that in a review, um, which will come early next week, I imagine. So stay tuned for that. But let's see if this thing will power on. I don't know. I haven't used it, so I don't know if it has any power. It just vibrated, but nothing happened. So there we go. It's going to power on. And we'll compare this to a couple devices I have laying around just to see. And while I'm at it, I might as well pop in my own SIM card and my own SD card. So I got this thing booted up with my information on here. And let's take a look at the actual software. The first thing that's really cool about this is the lock screen. You get a blinds effect when you run your finger up and down the lock screen, which is kind of cool. Kind of fun to play with a little bit. Um, I did play with the software just for a few minutes just to see what everything was about, get accustomed to the software, and get a little feel for how everything works on here. First, you'll notice that the icons are totally customized. They're very Sony-esque if you used a Sony television or maybe even a PS3. You'll notice that these are very much like other icons you see from Sony. If you tap the Applications icon, you'll open the App Drawer, and it's very similar but different to or from, different from the stock Android App Drawer. You can uninstall, I guess that's for a mass uninstall, um, share and customize, and if you tap here, you get different orders. You can organize your applications based on different orders. If you pull down the notification shade, you get quick settings at the top here. It's really unobtrusive and kind of blends well. I like how it looks. You have sound profiles, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mobile data, and a settings shortcut. And you'll also notice here that I got this notification after the phone rebooted. It's a blank SD card. That means the micro SD XC card that I have in here, the 64 gigabyte card does not work. It is not compatible with this device, which is upsetting. That means that you cannot use a 64 gigabyte card in this device. And that's sad. You have to stick to a typical 32 gigabyte card or smaller. So that's a little upsetting, but it's okay. Another thing about this device is the colors are extremely vibrant. I don't know if the camera does it justice at all or even comes close. Let's turn this brightness up a little bit and take a look. You can see that these colors here in the background are very, very crisp and vibrant. And one of the things about this display that was, I guess, a little controversial or upsetting more so at CES was how it's not very, it doesn't have a high contrast ratio. The blacks are not really that black. They're more an inky gray than anything. They're not as dark as you would see on even like the 1X. I have the 1X here and the blacks, as you can see in the notification shade, are just not as black. I don't know how to show you on camera here, but it's just, they're, they're more of a light gray than black. Side by side with even like the Nexus 4, which you turn the brightness up on this thing, you can see that the colors just, 
just pop a lot more on the, the Xperia Z. So the the contrast may not be that great. As you can see here, this is a better better example maybe. The navigational buttons, the background on this is more of a gray and this is just inky black. It blends in with the bezel. This one you can definitely see where the buttons end or where the display ends and where the bezel begins. This has been a look at the Sony Xperia Z. Keep it locked on Pocket Now to see more coverage on this device. There'll be a couple comparisons this week, a little more coverage on this device particularly, and a review next week, early next week. So keep it locked on Pocket Now. Stay tuned for more Xperia Z coverage. I'm Taylor Martin, and I will see you next time.